Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about unemployment. Unemployment and the unemployment rate are without a doubt um, a couple of the most watched and most influential economic statistics. You see them all the time on the headlines of newspapers from the Wall Street Journal to a local paper. And today we're going to be talking about what it means to be employed, what it means to be unemployed, and the different types of unemployment. All right, so let's start off by talking about what the unemployment rate is. This is the percentage of people who are in the civilian labor force who are unemployed. So in order to be considered unemployed, you have to meet two criteria. Number one, you have to be looking for work. And number two, you cannot find it. Okay, so if you're not looking for work, you are not considered unemployed. And that can create a little bit of a, a monkey wrench in those unemployment statistics. Okay, so once again, in order to be considered unemployed, you have to be looking for work, but unable to find it. So, you might ask yourself, how, are, uh, how is this unemployment rate measured? What happens is the Census Bureau, they conduct a monthly study called the Current Population Survey. Um, they interview about 60,000 households across the United States and they ask them, are you looking for work and can you find it? And based on those statistics, they can go ahead and calculate that unemployment rate. Okay, so this is analyzed and published by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the BLS, in the United States uh, the U.S. Department of Labor. So the unemployment is going to in, rate is going to increase during times of recession. It's going to decrease during times of expansion, and is without a doubt one of the most closely watched and publicized labor force statistics. All right, but there are definitely problems with calculating the unemployment rate. Number one, uh, marginally attached workers are not counted as being unemployed. These are people who once held productive jobs but have given up looking for work. Maybe they believe that it's just impossible to find a job right now because you're in the middle of a recession or depression. There's many different reasons that people become marginally attached to the workforce. But nevertheless, um, they are not going to be counted in that official unemployment rate because if you're not looking for work, you're not going to be considered unemployed. It also does not um, indicate the number of un underemployed workers. These are workers who either have jobs beneath their skill level, think somebody with a PhD working at McDonald's, or who want a full time who want full time work but are only able to find part time jobs. So these people would be considered employed, but they're not fully utilizing their skills. They're not being as productive as they potentially could be. So these are what are called underemployed workers. Now, if you throw this number in uh, with the, un, uh, the unemployment rate, you get what's called the U6 number. Some people call that the real unemployment rate because it counts those underemployed workers. But the standard un unemployment rate does not count underemployed workers, and it does not count these marginally attached workers who have ended up um, not looking for work due to frustration. Those are also called discouraged workers. In fact, um, these marginally attached workers, really, they're not even in the labor force because they're not looking for work. All right, so when macroeconomists study unemployment and the unemployment rate in various nations, their goal is to get the unemployment rate to what's called full employment. This is important for economic stability. It does not mean everyone has a job and the unemployment rate is zero. In fact, if you have an unemployment rate of zero, chances are you're going to have wage inflation. Because what happens is that employers, um, if they want to hire somebody, need to pay people a lot of money to work for them because everybody has a job. So they have to steal from another uh, employer and they have to probably pay, if they're going to steal an employee from another employer, they're going to have to pay them more. And so 0% uh, unemployment rate will probably cause wage inflation, which will probably cause inflation, which is when uh, prices are going up. So an unemployment rate of zero isn't even necessarily um, a great thing for the economy. There's always 
always going to be some unemployment in an economy. Now, the unemployment rate about 5% represents full employment. So that is the goal of macroeconomists is they want to get an economy where it has 5% unemployment. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some different types of unemployment. The first one is frictional unemployment. This kind of unemployment is almost always going to exist. It's just the kind of unemployment that exists when people are moving from one job to another. So they quit one job in order to take another for a period of time. They're going to be uh, considered frictionally unemployed. Or if somebody graduated high school and they're waiting to start their first job, they would be frictionally unemployed. Okay, those would be a couple examples of frictional unemployment. Now structural unemployment is considered a worse type of unemployment. Um, it is the employment that exists as a result of changes in technology or in the way the economy is structured. Usually a good example of this is I sometimes will ask my students what killed Blockbuster? And usually they'll say, well, Redbox or Netflix. And I would agree with them. But nevertheless, the employees of Blockbuster we would be considered structurally unemployed because technology's changed. Uh, you have Netflix. You have Redbox. So the entire market for movies and for watching movies, uh, these rental movies, so to speak, has changed. So those Blockbuster employees are going to be structurally unemployed. All right, so our next type of unemployment is going to be seasonal unemployment. So seasonal unemployment is almost always going to exist. It's not a typically bad, uh, an especially bad type of unemployment. So seasonal unemployment is the regular fluctuations in unemployment as a result of the regular occurrences such as the holidays, the school year, harvest schedules, industry production schedules. So think uh, somebody who would be seasonally unemployed would be uh, lots of times students will get hired for the holidays and then they'll get laid off in January or February or whatever it might be. That would be a good example of seasonal unemployment when they get laid off. And then finally you have cyclical unemployment. So this cyclical, cyclical unemployment is the type of unemployment that exists as a result of recessions and economic downturns. And this generally for economists is considered the worst type of unemployment because it creates a negative cycle. It's thus you have cyclical unemployment. Uh, because what happens is people get laid off, so they don't spend money, so that furthers the recession. So more people are laid off, and those people don't spend money, with, which furthers the recession. So you have this downward spiral that can really, really, really hurt an economy. So cyclical unemployment is a type of unemployment that economists want to avoid at all costs. All right, so moving on here, and we are on our assessment. So for number one, the unemployment that stems from people moving from one job to another is called what? And then number two, Workers who have jobs beneath their skill level, who, who, want, or, um, who want to find full-time work, are considered to be what? Give you guys a few seconds for that. All right. So, for the summary, we've talked about four different types of unemployment. Let's go ahead and summarize those for the summary. And we'll go ahead and go from there. 
So thank you very much, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.